So we've come into San Sebastian Marina. It's actually a really nice marina. There's a, a short walk into the town and there's a place you can swim over there. Um, but the main reason we've come in is to escape some westerly winds and also to do some boat jobs. Never ending boat jobs. So we've got a, we've got a broken hatch. But yesterday, sadly, as we were sailing along, uh, the hatch was slightly open and a rope caught the hatch and opened it opened it way too much and you can see here that like the corners of the it actually broke the whole thing the whole thing opened up flat so that's going to need to that's going to need to be fixed pizza from scratch so I made the uh, the base I just made some spelt tar a whole new spelt um, dough and took a third of my usual loaf amount and made that into the base and then I baked that in the oven first and I'm putting as a as a kind of base this is a vegan pesto that I made some toppings onions and mushrooms and some fresh chili and this sort of thing very nice. Yeah. It's a real treat to be flat and in the marina, isn't it? Yeah, we did it is. all our jobs, we fixed the hat. <laughs> yeah. And I'll take you outside and you can see. It's actually a bit of an evening glass off, which normally would mean we're rolling around like a beast, but actually in here, it's proper glass. Really nice. Finished product. <laughs> be gone nice in a few seconds. <laughs> Okay, Tom, tell us what's happening. Um, yeah, we just had sort of multiple boat, boat jobs uh, in the last week or two. Um, we had the, had the toilet blocking up, which is quite a major one and not very pleasant. And then uh, the water tank, our 200 litre water tank, um, which, is, which was new about a year ago, started leaking. That took a while to fi find it and fix it. And when we put it back in it, and it still leaked. Um, uh, there were two different leaks. I'm just getting familiar with this scoop, he says, but losing this is what it's like. Because the boat's <laughs> moving around, springs flying everywhere. This is part of the micro switch assembly of our water pump, so our water pump has stopped working. It means that we can't use our water um, mm. unless we use the hand pump, which is a backup, but the hand pump, because we haven't used it much, it's got black uh, mould throughout all the pipes and tastes like pond water. Um, so, <laughs> so it's not <laughs> ideal. So essentially, I've become familiar with this little part here inside the pump let me show you where i'm where i'm working here inside here if i put a light on um, every time it stops working which is about every half an hour i have to take all these boxes out under the seat and the assembly i'm working on goes on the front of the pump here and it's it's called a micro switch uh, so i'll let me film it's called a micro switch um, essentially this is it this little micro switch here faulty or working intermittently you can see this contact is bent anyway so like the chances of finding one of these on Lagomera is like normally you just buy one five quid replace it next day delivery Amazon but out here I'm, I'm gonna have to drill out the rivet and try and fix this now um, but luckily as always there's amazing little YouTube tutorials so hopefully hopefully we can fix it so I don't know if you can see what I've done there but this this casing on this micro switch was held together with a rivet so I've managed to drill out that rivet yeah and that should now come out of there. Anyway, that's the case come off. To get the drill back out. Have you found the problem? Well, we can hopefully see what the problem is. Mm. This I looks think. Bright. Yeah, this is going to be the problem here. Look at that. It's really burnt out. Oh, yeah. Look at that. So that, that will need sanding back. Okay. Uh, so that's how it works. It's sort of pushes down and makes contact on this yeah. contact here. 
yeah anyway fingers crossed we can make it make it better mm. <laughs> so how's it going then tom well <laughs> you know when you yeah i prized open this contact and then out of this space here yeah. all of these bits just sprang oh dear. and separated and there's like little springs like this little mm -hmm. little bit of metal so now it's like a mensa test and luckily we videoed it so i had a picture but even with the picture it's just it's so fiddly it's ridiculous but i've cleaned these contacts so those contacts will join together hopefully so reassembled Reassembled, yeah, I've got it back together. So I managed yeah. to get all the springy bits back in, which is super fiddly. Amazing. And then you can test the, the micro switches in here, the two contacts uh, back in. You can test this by putting one contact in here. Mm -hmm. um, and this should be on millivolts. So it's on naught there, and then when you press the button, goes up to one or two even so I can't see that really seems, well, seems to be working we'll try hopefully we'll have water yeah. so what's the result final result it seems to be fingers crossed working yeah my I'll god i'll take the take the thing yeah. down it's a bit boring to look at but you can have a look in here yeah. it's a two-person job this because you need someone on the tap oh. off oh Beautiful. Fingers crossed, that's it. I wanted to say, <laughs> I might be a bit biased, but <laughs> Tom's pretty amazing at problem solving and uh, he tends not to give up when he um, when there's a problem <laughs> to solve. He like is dogged in his determination to sort it out. And um, we didn't have the option of like buying another switch being here. It's like not like he said, you, you can't easily just like order something and it arrives. Um, and there aren't really, yeah, there just isn't the shops available with spares like that available. So, um, well done, Tom. <laughs> <laughs> so, hi, Tom. Then you go with the sink. What's happening here? More boat jobs. Oh, boat job. How unusual. Yeah. <laughs> Like an infestation, but we're gonna put down some stuff and try and yeah, get rid unfortunately, of the we're gonna have to put some bit of chemicals down to get rid of them, aren't we? But you know, that's how it goes if you live on a boat, you can't can't live with a load of cockroaches, unfortunately. Yeah, mm. it's a good look, isn't it? Cockroaches <laughs> Stop are it down there, Stop it. <laughs> <laughs> the cockroaches are the heavy cockroaches. The I'm mm. turning off now. It's quite a strong look as well, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, I don't want to get smelly hands. Because it is quite smelly. Clean sink? Yeah, it's really smelly and gungy down the pee hole. <laughs> 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 the plug hole. <laughs> oh god. <laughs> it won't sit very well in this bucket. Anyway. It's quite rolly, isn't it? Yeah. I'm going to fill up this with white vinegar. Like that, and then put some bicarb of soda in. So we try not nothing that's too uh, bad for the environment, because basically this is going to go in the sea. So the vinegar yeah. will get um, neutralised. We've got a little bug there. It's not a cockroach. It's just Good. a small. <laughs> just a fly. Okay yeah. then. So this is going to go. Obviously, this is going in the sea. So we don't want anything that's going to harm the environment so we yeah we always we always use uh, biodegradable washing up we make sure we try and find biodegradable washing up liquid and so it gonna explode. It looks like it's gonna explode. no it's just fizzy <laughs> yeah hopefully that will clean out all that gunge it's quite hard to get to
So whilst Lou's down here working, getting some amazing images, some of which you'll see later, I basically tag along and learn. These are little yellow mouth barracuda, tiny little juvenile ones. When they get bigger, this is what they look like and they take on more of a solitary life. Really exciting to see these fish. This guy gave me a hell of a shock when I first saw him. He's called a spotfin burfish and it's really big. And apparently Lou is telling me they can fill themselves up with water into a big ball so that they can't be easily eaten. And they eat sea urchins, these two little black sea urchins. So they, they, this one had sea urchin spines in its mouth where it's obviously munching on sea urchins. Now we generally love fish, but these lizard fish are fierce. They, they just look really scary. They ambush predators. So we approach very cautiously because I think they could actually give you a nasty bite on a finger, but they'll come out and grab a whole fish. These are Mediterranean parrotfish. Uh, there's a whole bunch of males mostly. Um, the females are the ones which are red. So here's a couple of females. They've got this really, really sort of sweet way of swimming with their uh, side fins. And they've got such characters. Their mouths are sort of almost like smiley faces. I was filming these, uh, these females here and I didn't actually see until about now that there was an octopus in the background. It was so well camouflaged. And so I sort of, I was already at the end of my breath hold here. So I sort of just held on for a bit longer and uh, yeah, a little bit extra footage. They're amazing to see in the water. And if you haven't seen My Octopus Teacher, I really highly recommend you go and check it out on Netflix. It's an incredible film. This is called a red comb star. And yeah, you can see Lou's image here, beautiful. Underneath this overhang, I saw one of these glass eye snapper fish, um, but only afterwards, again, I noticed there was a ray hiding in the sand. And there was also one of these arrow crabs. And they're really colorful. So they've got this sort of black and white stripy body, and this one seemed to be reaching out for a high five. This is a Mediterranean rockfish and again amazing camouflage and um, pretty bold. They just sit there hoping that, that you haven't seen them really. These are yellow tube sponges. Uh, these canary damselfish with their flash of blue. They're real characters as well. They kind of pr properly feisty. They'll come up and try and see you off if you get too close. We also see these bearded fireworms. Here's one of Lou's photos. Definitely ones not to pick up as they can give you a sting. This Macronesian sharp nosed pufferfish is one of our favorite little creatures. Uh, they're really curious, so they'll come up and have a good look at you. But this is something we don't see that often, and it's literally hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of fish all in one big shoal. And these are called grunts, and they were down at about 20 meters. Um, but it's actually, I mean, the oceans have been overfished and the huge shoals like that are relatively rare for us to see. And I believe 20 years ago, we might've seen a lot more big shoals of fish like that. These ornate rats are always down there. They're fantastic little characters. The males are, are the curious ones. They'll come right up to you and have a good look. And they're just so colorful. I had a really nice little moment with this Guinean puffer fish. I decided to take the GoPro down and put it on the sand and then I floated off back to the surface. And if you look closely, you can see that the fish is definitely watching me go up, up to the surface. And then it's looking at the camera going, oh, what is this thing? It just kind of really shows you the movements of the eye and the thoughtfulness of this fish, how sentient and, you know, they're thinking, feeling creatures just like us. Turd crack. <laughs> These are actually sea cucumbers, and uh, yeah, a little photo bomb from an or ornate wrasse. Um, beautiful picture of a red starfish that Lou got. 
These Atlantic trumpet fish are really shy actually, we can never get too close, they're always doing squeezing off into, into crevices and disappearing. They're actually related to seahorses. This cuttlefish is probably the biggest cuttlefish we've ever seen. They're incredible to spend a bit of time with. They, they sort of swim along with their waving mantle, um, but they can also turn around and face you and then whiz off in a, using their, their jet propelled sort of water jets to, to escape in a cloud of ink. And they've got incredible camouflage in, as well. I'd never seen this sort of little fish before. It was just underneath our boat. It's, it had these almost, almost like these little white legs that it was walking along on the seabed but apparently it's called a gurnard. If you just sit there quietly, the fish will come over to see you. You know, they're really curious. These are white trevally, and they were literally coming within 10 centimeters of my mask. We feel really privileged to be able to go free diving, to enjoy this time, and the water here is just stunning. One of the highlights of the last few weeks was this particular free dive where we saw this female eagle ray. Occasionally she'd be joined by a male and they would swim along together in formation. This one went off into deeper water and you can see here all, this, all the garden eels sort of dipping down as, as she swam across them. The garden eels are real characters. They, they live in these burrows and they come out and they all face into the tide and filter feed. And in the background you, you probably just start to make out a little fish coming, which represents a bit of a threat. This is, I left the camera down here so I wasn't down here at this point. And you can see the fish coming and all the garden eels just disappear. Great, we love the garden eels. This is one of the most common rays that we see. It's called a round fan tail ray, and they're ginormous. They're like the size of a car bonnet. Always exciting to see them. I hope you enjoyed joining us on some of our freediving adventures. If you liked this video then hit the like and subscribe button and also click on the bell that means you'll be notified when we make a new video. It really helps us to get more subscribers. Also these videos are made possible by our patrons who contribute the price of a cup of coffee every month to help us to make these videos to put the time aside to edit these videos together for you to enjoy. So if you enjoyed it and you want to support us then consider becoming a patron. Thanks so much for watching. We'll see you next time.